Transform means redesign. That's the word, reimagining, learning. Now, because today we are focusing on the educators, right? And when we talk about educators, I'm afraid that most of you are always thinking about KPI. Betul? Betul? Yes? Right? How am I going to finish my syllabus if I'm going to do all these activities? When is the time for me to do research? When is the time for me to, to write papers? Right? So, how do we actually design? Again, the word design. Eh? How do we actually design our teaching and learning and research together that we can actually achieve all KPIs without doing many things? Okay? Meaning that when we design one project, it can be achievable. You can actually publish paper, you can actually do uh, copyrights. At the same time, you do community work. And at the same time, you engage, uh, you design your, that task is for your students in teaching and learning. So, as a researcher, okay, as a researcher, this, anybody can, this is actually, do you know what, what, what are these? Micro, memang micro. <laughs> what are these? People? Anybody? Those that are part of science? Fungus. Definitely fungus. The video tak jalan? This is actually a video. This is called the neocalimastics that I have isolated in 1997. Okay? And this is, of course, this one is actually a fungus from the cattle. Rumen of cattle. Perut lembu. Rumen of cattle. This one also, this one is under the microsco uh, normal microscope. This is the uh, scanning electron microscope. This is actually a video just now. Tapi video tak jalan, kenapa? So this is actually my PhD work. Okay. The studying on the microbes in the rumen. And I can, uh, um, I want to share with you that without microbes in the rumen, there will be no cattle. There will be no sheep, there will be no ruminants because they live symbiotically. Ini bukan class microbiology. They, they, will, they, they live symbiotically with the animals. Right? I tak tekan. Magic. Okay, never mind. Let's hope the other videos will be played. Right. Okay, so research. Um, I think kan, I think it's very important that I know that you have your postgraduate students, and I'm sure that most of you are you have time. It, it would it would be good if you have time to actually spend time in the lab. This is for 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 uh, life sciences lah. Okay, to actually uh, not upskilling. Of course, uh, uh, it can be upskilling to actually remind you, remind yourself that you are a researcher, right? Some, some of you perhaps have not been, especially those in biological or life sciences, some of you may not even have hold uh, uh, a pipette for, for so long or even for a micro pipette. But it's very important that we spend time also in the lab for hands-on so that that experience can be shared with our students. Not only in the lab, not only with our research, but when we 
teach our students in the classroom. Okay? Now, of course, when we talk about research, it's about publication. Why we need to publish? Huh? Because we want to make known to other people the research findings that may be beneficial to others. And that can happen only through publications. Right? So, through my research, we, we have actually patented a few uh, patents and through the fungus, okay, but not through that 1997 fungus, but 2015 fungus, we actually produce enzyme. And that enzyme was used, can be used to um, obtain fibers from canal. Okay, usually that is knaf is a tree, is a plant, for uh, is a non wood natural fiber. So usually the the knaf um, in India in Bangladesh, they dump the knaf stem in the river. They take three weeks to get the fibers, right? Using my enzyme would take three days, right? So we actually patented and and that fibers are used in your laptop to make furnitures. Um, Toyota, for example, the door panel of the, uh, of, of, uh, the, the cars is using canal fibers. So, why we even show, uh, just now we said we publish, but we want to showcase. Ini bukan, it's showcase, okay? Not show off. <laughs> Showcasing, remember? So that other people will benefit. And when you actually uh, go for competitions, you learn more because you see other people's innovation. Right? You see other people's innovation. And this is the one, the tech planter demo day. Um, and you get to go, uh, get, when, when, um, when you have this um, innovation that you want to share, then you get uh, engaged. Uh, you try to engage with uh, overseas. So from this Tech Planter Demo Day, so they have um, connect me to uh, Japanese industries, companies, by Leaf Ernest, so brought me to Japan to pitch for a grant. Okay, to pitch for a grant. And we won the grant for 15 million yen. And this, the governor of the Ota City, Japan, that, that money is from Ota City, Japan. And they, they actually built a enzyme, a production uh, for, for us. And they brought over from Japan to UPM. And that cost them about uh, 200,000 USD altogether with the grants. Right, so now it's, it's being, uh, this is for upscaling, huh? to upscale the, 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 before this because we can only produce about 20 liter of enzyme. Now we are per day. So now we are producing about 100 liter per day. Now, that is in your research. So you have your papers, you have your, your students, you have pat uh, patents, now you have products, right? And that is of course again prof, supported by the universities also when the, um, in, for example, um, some of the universities support the, uh, what we call startups, huh? startup. Startup means you can have a spin-off company under the university to commercialize your products. That is for tangible product like this. But those for those in social sciences, your modules, your video, uh, your, your drawings, for example, that can also be copyrighted and commercialized. That's where your uh, uh, e-learning can be very useful. So, when we talk about teaching and learning, then involve a broader uh, scope. MOOC, using MOOC. I was informed you have now, how many prof? 22. 
Ah, uh, twenty-two moks, right? Now again, moks is not just about having massive. I know it's massive open online, but it's not just about having all these students joining your course. It's again engagement and how we can design your MOOC for uh, to be more creative and quality MOOC. Here we talk about how we can gamify, for example, gamify your MOOC course. How can you get your uh, industry to come in to support your MOOC? Bukan macam Facebook like other Facebook ad, you know, advertisement to to commercialize to make money from that. But how can you collaborate with an industry to uh, uh, work with your with your MOOC? Okay. Um, I designed actually one MOOC with my students. Uh, called the Amazing Microbes MOOC, um, we actually gamify the MOOC to make it into a um, what do you call that? Scavenger hunts. So every topic, there's uh, every topic they we have videos, not uh, normal videos, but um, using Powtoon and video scrap and all, and then uh, in that when they do the assessment, there there will be a clue. And that clue is to solve one another puzzle, and that puzzle will bring you to another another uh, uh, clue, right? Right. And we have also global classroom uh, and credit transfer in MOOC. So I think the next step for UMS is to come up with a credit transfer MOOC abroad. Okay. So we have these guidelines. How many of you actually use this guideline to when you actually develop your MOOC? Those 22 courses. For example, we have this guideline from uh, a Credit Transfer MOOC 2016. And we have this Malaysia MOOC journey that shared how uh, Malaysia MOOCs have been developed since 2014. And this Amalan Quality MOOC. This is sharing best practices of quality MOOC. What kind of video, what type of video, how long is the video, what kind of assessment, interactive assessment that can be used, can be developed and designed in your uh, MOOC course. So this is the shared uh, to be uh, uh, sharing best practices, uh, especially from all the other universities uh, quality MOOC. Okay, this one, credit transfer, very important. In UTEM, they have this course. Anyone, any of your of your students in UMS or any part of the world can take this course. Mandarin in UTEM. Three credits. Okay, let's say that three credits, how are you going to transfer? Work together with UTEM, for example. They have their own uh, self-assessment. What we call that competency-based assessment. So let's say, I've, uh, and that, uh, this course is very popular because students from any other institution can take and they can take at any time at any time in their four years and still can be transferred into credits untuk bergaduat for to graduate now let's say if uh, UMS offering uh, you 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 recommend you suggest for your students to take this course you can have your own competency based assessment to assess your students their, um, on their uh, Huayi kan? before you actually transfer the credit okay? because the, um, the course in the uh, MOOC itself have their own assessment already also okay now I would want to take to ask you to take this challenge Prof it has to come from you. <laughs> Allow them to do this. Blended learning substitution. Dah ada ke? Belum? Belum. Now you're doing 1732, right? Now dah jadi zikir. 1732, 1732. Hmm? 1732. Right? So 1732 is only 
3 credits is 12 hours 3 credit 42 hours kan so 30% is about 12.6 hours ok so what we actually proposed is that 12 hours no class no need to come to class right UM, UPM, UTM, UMP Senate sudah approve uh, Senate has given the approval to do this um, Some of the programs in UPM are doing 50% 50% meaning that 42 hours only berapa? 21 hours face to face now that doesn't mean that no need uh, no class uh, no physical class learning cannot happen but please do not take this do not misuse this it's very important that the the lecturers the educators still have to do engagement with the student within that 12 hours that you're going to replace engaging means you may have to have virtual synchronous I, you may be here in your class your students in the college ada yang balik kampung balik kimanis macam saya huh? right In, I hope that kimanis will have good wifi right <laughs> virtual huh? virtual synchronous synchronous mean face to face macam webinar tu you can set ok for this topic at 5 or oh, at 5 like too late at 3 p.m we're going to have a discussion if you use Moodle you using Moodle kan prof Moodle Moodle ada uh, BBB BBB big blue button ah huh? ada that big blue button if you dah masuk put the plug in uh, of course you're using the version 3 point ah uh, the new version the new version is embed that big, 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 big button, you can use that big, big button for virtual um, uh, video conferences and they have breakout rooms. Okay? Breakout rooms. Let's say you have uh, four groups, uh, five uh, three o'clock when you uh, our schedule. So, 3.15 with this group, you know. Or you can even have uh, uh, um, concurrent session. And you can drop by to this room five minutes. You can drop by to this room five minutes, for example. Huh? So the technology is there. How are we going to use it effectively for learning? Right? So, for Rasid Tengah Du. Okay? This is just a minimum guideline. Okay, minimum guideline. Um, I think in this, walaupun uh, this has not been um, circulated, but um, by hopefully by next week we get the approval from the um, department and then uh, can be uh, used with, uh, can be distributed to all. But some of the universities also have started. So this was developed by uh, Mepta and JPT. Okay, my credential. This one very interesting. We have received the guideline, a short guideline for implementation, but MQA and JPT are working on the comprehensive guideline on my credential. Now, this is this is more exciting rather than long course because this one is number micro, okay? What we do in MOOC is macro but at the same time using MOOC you can actually micro can be meaning that topics can be in the form of short course uh, short uh, um, exercise right short video or what we call as bite-sized learning bite-sized learning your students tengah tunggu bus can actually access three minutes of your explanation for example or three minute or one minute of the questions right and that short courses they can actually get digital badges the accumulation uh, 
of the digital badges can be transferred into credits. That's micro credential also. Okay, part of the uh, micro credentials. Credential means award in the form of digital certificate. So, question is, how can uh, we get, how can we actually leverage on this micro credential for even us to upskilling, retooling ourselves? How can we use this to engage with the industry? You are the experts in the universities, right? How can you um, work together with the industry to come up with a short course for their employees, for example? <coughs> Shell, okay? Shell, we met Shell, oil and gas Shell. And she, they said that they want to help to enhance uh, their workers. Yeah, even yang, yang in the gas station, for example. What kind of uh, courses, short course, that you can provide to them using your platform? Meaning that you are offering a course to the industry for their employees through micro-credential. Now, in USM, USM is doing this micro-credential for teachers. Okay? So, some of the courses cost them about 10 ringgit. Yeah. 10 ringgit course, they take, they know how to do uh, using uh, upper event organizing uh, management, for example. Huh? For or even Photoshop, okay? Or how to use AR, augmented reality in teaching. Huh? Six hour course or one, hour, uh, one week or two weeks course. Micro credential. So you would want to identify how um, your expertise and how you can contribute to others. Uh, global classroom. Global Classroom is synchronous, synchronous class engaging with other classes outside Malaysia. This is done by UMP, University of Malaysia Pahang. Okay? They just use Zoom je. Huh? Just use Zoom, uh, buy the uh, Zoom license, right? Kalau tak beli pun, is a... Uh, 40 minutes, uh, the, no, the free one is 40 minutes, right? Now, meaning uh, and a web camera, okay? Uh, for live streaming, meaning that, kalau tak payah live streaming pun, you can just use your laptop for, for a start. Meaning that when we have this class, other people in Japan, in the UK can actually uh, involve, okay? They even have debate through Global Classroom. Huh? group debate from UMP and the other one from Pakistan to Bangladesh. Okay? So, this is about flexible. Uh, just now we mentioned about how we can actually be more flexible in, in designing learning activities, in assessment. So, we had the flexible education seminar in July where we, come, uh, where we discuss on the Micro-credential, credit transfer, transdisciplinary, digital entrepreneurship, e-learning in entrepreneur, entrepreneurial courses, right? I'll discuss with you later about Sulam. Okay, we had this colloquium, Pendidikan Revolusi Industry 4.0, just recently, this week, this 5th November, on Tuesday, last Tuesday. And in this colloquium, we actually showcases, we actually showcased the, uh, where we are in Industry 4.0 in using technology, robotics, IoT, big data, right? And uh, cybersecurity, all the nine pillars of the uh, Industry Revolution. Now, if let's say 
what will be that skill set will form your current design of your learning activities of current assignment and tasks and whether or not you using e-learning or not or uh, physically or like for example even like field trip and all will the students have all the skills that are required by the future workforce that's the question that we should ask ourselves right now now this book again framing of malaysia education 4.0 do you have this book no prof kita kena bagi the pdf of this book for everybody together with this book malaysia's future higher education scenarios in this book they mention about uberization of education huh? uberization of education bukan grabization grab line uberization huh? of education uber university nama dia how can but uberization here meaning that the accessibility inclusivity equity quality huh? just like mapping our uh, 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 aligned with the sdg huh? meaning that how how everybody can access for education okay through flexible education to flexible learning pathway do you want uh apa ums if you want uh, one of the way to increase um number of students for example through apel a apel c meaning that these people they don't have actually proper formal education but based on the experience they can enroll in your degree huh so kena would want to venture maybe can identify some of the programs right that can use this flexible learning pathway okay so of all these as i mentioned earlier that all the skill set all the dream and imagine uh, im imagination will not be uh, achieved without giving them experience and in order for you to design for experiential learning it has to be through problem based or, uh, learning or project based learning right cannot just be simple assignment quiz jawab 20 question multiple choice what kind of experience is that right and it, it has to be learner centered let's say if you use presentation i give you a simple presentation because last time i remember very well i think in early 2005 2006 when we talk about SEL, kan? SEL, student-centered. And people actually usually, uh, when we talk about SEL, it's all about presentation. Huh? Then, my students present. Using PowerPoint, standing fun group, group presentation. All the group will sit together there, and then one by one. Okay, my next topic is for my, uh, I will give my friend to present. Kan? Presentation. And that is SEL. At that time, now, if let's say we use SEL, uh, we use uh, uh, e-learning for presentation, different type of presentation, H how are you going to use? For example, scenario, scenario presentation. How do you use e-learning? Video presentation. It can just be as simple as uploading your Padlet, for example. And that video presentation can just be like one or two minutes right kwl so many kwl do you know what is kwl what do you know what do you want to know and what you have learned right so there are many eh? okay maker mindset make invent so the ladder is now a maze Students need to be able to engage in iterative thinking, creative, critical, and we are have we are the one who actually need to be to guide them, but they have to persevere. And 
our enthusiasm must be shared with our students. We have to show that we are excited to learn and we are excited for learning with them. Okay? And that maker mindset here, meaning that they, this will actually cover the skill set of design thinking also. Okay? That's why we actually produced this book, Transdisciplinary Makerspace. Has yet to be published. Um, hopefully everything will be published by, by uh, December, all the books that I mentioned. Um, UMS has one makerspace coming soon, right, Bob? Or you have one ready? Huh? Coming, right? Let's say now, why we focus, why we emphasize on transdisciplinary makerspace? Okay, let's say in one space, because makerspace is a space to make. In that makerspace, you have 3D printers. You have laser cutters, for example. Tak ada lagi, tak apa. And you have corner for AR, VR, augmented reality. Okay? You have one corner for textile, for example. One room for ENE, Arduino. Right? Transdisciplinary. One room for wood, design of wood, for example. The other corner for graphic design, all the computers, right? So this space, this room, is supposed to be accessed by students, organized by students, empowering the students to take charge. They can actually, let's say, how, how are we going to use, as an educator here, how are we going to use that maker space? to design, to get our students involved. For me, I'm teaching microbiology, so I get my students to do, to create the 3D model using SketchUp, using 1, 2, 3 design. They themselves, what? Okay? Bring that file, go to Makerspace, print out using 3D printers. Right? Because we are learning about the structure. For example, when you actually design, you are learning the structures. When I go to this transdisciplinary, we have all these uh, different different um, equipments uh, from uh, we have textile. I didn't know just now. We will meet students from other faculties. I meet maybe when I was printing uh, uh, when I when I was printing the 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 three D uh, model three D printed uh, 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 microbes bacteria for example. I meet these students from engineering. Uh, who are from industrial design. Uh, and then, when, when you know, we are engaging and, and talking and everything, or, uh, you know, we try to develop the learning community there. That's one. Another one is, for example, students, we want to develop, just now, remember, holistic, balanced and entrepreneurial graduates. The uh, entrepreneurial innovations can be developed through that makerspace where students actually come up with modules of workshops for even school students. Make money, not maintain the makerspace, ma? Yeah. Come up with uh, modules. So this weekend, kita buat 3D printed models. Just fix a few uh, models, open up. Promote for kawasan KK whatsoever schools. You see, kalau I parents, memang I parents pun, or five, right? I would want my, I would want my kids to go uh, during apa uh, uh, weekends to go for a three D printed uh, uh, models, you know, workshop run by UMS. So the students learn on how to make money, learns how to, to organize, so many, all the soft skills can be. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> there are so many ways to do this, and, but we need you. The, 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 the students need us to push, and they may not see this, 
Okay, they may not see this. That's why we we are here to guide them. Okay, to facilitate. So now, of course, they will make mistakes. Let them make mistakes. But important is to learn from that mistakes, and we will want to be there. Okay. Okay. This is noble. You soon will be having another book. Another. Well, it's not a guideline. It's just a playbook. Playbook means you know some references for you to use when you actually again designing the syllabus, designing the activities, national outcome based learning. Uh, some of of the universities have their own system. This is actually for memperkasakan to strengthen the outcome based education, which is one of the enabler for the shared prosperity vision just now. So you see, like USM, they have this index hebat, holistic, entrepreneurial, balanced, articulate thinker. Okay, USIM with Gina model graduation, uh, graduan integrasi ilmu nak nakli dan akil, akli. Okay. So noble is to uh, enhance the outcome based education. Meaning that we have assessed our student, we want just to make sure that we assess correctly. CS communication skill. How do you when you when you don't actually assess properly through communication, through presentation or through how do you actually assess the uh, uh, CS for example? Handbook for learning English and beyond. English. This book is published. Okay. I hope that UMS have got the book. Kalau tak dapat, please let us know because we have sent it to your VC. Okay, this one is for um, teaching English with all the examples on uh, the guideline, you know, on how to uh, assess uh, through uh, project base uh, uh, and not just to do exam base. <coughs> okay, Sulam. This is what another skill of science making just now. Remember? Service Learning Malaysia, University for Society. Was launched April 13, 2019 in Pulau Tanjung Surat UTM by uh, our minister. This is about getting our students to work with the industry. So, so actually we deploy our students as the experts in the community. For example, uh, as simple as English language, okay, as simple as English language, we identify one community, we send our student to teach the community on English, right? But that English course, English um, must be a credit bearing course, meaning that whatever they do is part of your learning activities to be assessed, to be given marks. For me, I don't give marks during the process, maybe the progress. Because we do not want, I, I myself, I do not want my students to go to the community and just because to get marks, right? That's one, one of my, my ways. Huh? Unimas has a very good, uh, um, for me, developed their Sulam. Sulam platform also. They have a website. They have the uh, forms. Uh, you can actually try to uh, uh, um, uh, access uh, Unima Sulam, and where you can see all the forms, how to uh, uh, forms to engage with the industry, the form for evaluations. Everything is there. Okay. UTM is another university that has also established uh, Sulam. 